Welcome here to Maple Grove High School. A cloudy and cool afternoon for a second round game here in the Section 5 4A tournament as our rivals collide here. Osseo, the number five seed and the number one seed. Maple Grove, Osseo advancing with a one run win over Rogers in the first round. And Maple Grove beating Park Center by a score of five to one. This is a game that was supposed to be played on Wednesday, but uh, a lot of rain earlier in the day and made the field conditions not playable by the uh, prospective game time there. So bump back to Thursday here as Osseo and Maple Grove get set to battle. There's a look at the lineup for the visiting Orioles. Eric Ruska's team. Caitlin Schulte, the second baseman, will lead it off. Grace Poppy, the designated player slash left fielder, hitting second. Serena Lee catches and hits third. The pitcher, Saray Trice, will hit fourth. Anna Carmen, the shortstop, hitting fifth. Bree Jones at third base. Then it's Erica Schulte in center. Kendall Podratz, the first baseman. And Lauren Hans, the designated player for Osseo and they were a 4-0 loser to Maple Grove during the regular season. Here's the defensive alignment for Jim Coltis and Maple Grove. Maddie Doyle, Elizabeth Berry, Jade Tomaszek and Ellie Hosman are on the infield. Mavis Sachs, Sidney Hockett, Kate Kapsner in the outfield. Sophie Colhane behind the plate and doing the pitching is Ava Dueck who has had a phenomenal year as a pitcher but also really as a hitter. Jack Tebow, I think she's been a a key cog on both sides of the, the coin for the Crimson this year. She definitely has been the double threat <clears throat> offensively and defensively, and she had a week ago, I believe it was about a week ago, she hit six home runs within one week. So Coach uh, Coltis has got to be really happy with her. Hey, can we move that back a little bit? Can we move this back a little bit, I guess? And Osseo... As we said, scoring a nice win over Rogers. Uh, Rogers is one of only two teams to beat Maple Grove this year, and so they're, you know, they're feeling that they're played pretty well down the stretch of the regular season. They had a little bit of a slump early on, but you know, they they, they know this Maple Grove team very well, and they feel, you know, they're kind of quietly confident that they can stay in this game and maybe uh, pull one out. Yeah, I think uh, we're going to find out relatively early in the game how things are going to. Evolve. You know, we were in section playoffs, and everybody's. Some of the seniors are now thinking, "It's my last game in high school. Maybe you know, I may, I may be out of here. A little one less game." So things are exciting during section time because you you have all these unknown factors involved in the game. Schulte fouled the first pitch away. The second one's in the dirt. A ball on a strike here. Breeze a little bit of a factor. You're going to see some fly balls knocked down a little bit, I think, if they're hit out to right field. But we'll see how that one goes. So one and one count here. And another foul. A ball and two strikes now to Schulte leading off the top of the first tier for the Orioles. The good news if you're Osseo, if you have to play an away game, it doesn't get any closer than this. Just a little down the road. trip uh, up the highway here. Hard hit ball and into left field for a base hit. Schulte will make the turn and hang on at first base, so she wins the battle against Ava Dueck. Slapping one to left field to get it started, and Grace Poppy will be the batter here for the Orioles. Good piece of hitting, took that outside pitch and went with it. And, um, you know, Dueck did have the two strike count on her, um, maybe a little fatter than she wanted it, perhaps. Yeah, no chance for Doyle on that one, too. Hard hit ball. Grace Poppy takes a strike here for Osseo. At least on the first pitch, not showing signs of bunning here, which... And the second one, she did square it, but takes it for a strike, so 0-2. Coach is wondering, now what happened there? Just missed with that one, one and two. That was a good 0-2 uh, pitch. Kind of the teaser right off the plate a little bit. Enough for it, but... Uh... And got her to wave at that one. So Poppy down on strikes. One out here in the top of the first. And Serena Lee, the catcher, will hit now for Osseo. If it do, has been a little bit under the weather this week. And so they're hoping that she's, you know, maybe not quite at full strength today, but it's still good enough to, uh, to come out here and hopefully for the crimson sake do well. Osseo having other ideas as Schulte started off with that nice base hit. Lee takes that one low for a ball. Of 
corners are creeping. They're still kind of thinking bunt. Yeah, they're up fairly tight, especially at first base. Mm -hmm. Runner is going. Culhane's throw down is in time. Barry slaps the tag down on Schulte, and she's caught stealing as Culhane got up and got a good, strong throw away. And you can hear the Maple Grove bench. They were expecting this on this pitch and got her fairly easily there. All the question was would Barry just be able to hang on as she. Yep, Culhane <laughs> knew it right away. You could see that little fist pump even before the tag was on. So two gone, and Lee still at the plate here with a one and two count here for the Orioles. And a rip and a miss. Stuart gets back-to-back -back strikeouts, and Culhane throws out the base stealer, so the Orioles done in the top of the first. No runs, one hit, and no one left on base, so... 0-0 after a half inning. Maple Grove will get their first chance with the bats here as they try and uh, pick up what would be their 20th win of the season, which is, you know, the length of season we have spring softball. That's an accomplishment to get to 20, and that's what they're hoping to do. Elizabeth Berry will lead it off here for the Crimson. Ava Duek, the pitcher, hits second. Then it's Jade Tomashek, another real dangerous hitter in the third slot. Ellie Hosman at first base. Sophie Culhane, the catcher. Sydney Hockett, then it's Bella Daniels, the DP. Mavis Sachs and left, and Maddie Doyle, the third baseman, hitting in the number nine slot for the Crimson. I think he could make a case for the uh, Maple Grove team as having one of the more dangerous offensive lineups uh, in their class. They go deep with their hitters. Look at the defensive alignment for Osseo. Jones, Carmen, Schulte, and Potratz around the infield. Poppy, Erica Schulte, and Kotke in the outfield. Serena Lee catching, and lefty Saray Trice will do the pitching here today for the Orioles. Watching them as they were, uh, you know, kind of warming up and everything, they're pretty loose. They're not, uh, you know, I, I think in a lot of cases, the fact that they know this Maple Grove team really well, I think it benefits Osseo, serves them well. They're not, it's not like, oh, we've got the number one seed, we're afraid. It's more like we want to go over and try and beat the girls that we grew up playing with or against uh, all the way up. Yeah, agreed. You know, uh, I always think there becomes a little more of a leveler each time you play one another. You get to learn a little more about each other, kind of more tendencies start popping up. And as uh, coaches will tell you, they always like tendencies. The more they can learn about uh, another team, the better off they feel they can compete. And uh, certainly with Osseo having played them only about uh, 10 days ago, I think it is by now, uh, it could be advantageous for them. Strike taken here by Elizabeth Berry. She's a 342 hitter so far this year. Scored 23 runs, knocked in 10, four doubles among her hits. Chopping this one off the plate and foul. You know, I talked with, uh, early in the week, I had a chance to talk with some of the Maple Grove girls about, you know, you want to be hyper-focused at playoff time, but also at the same time, you don't want to be too uptight. And they said, we do a pretty good job of really keeping things loose and, and needling each other if we make a mistake or things like that. Down to second, Schulte up with it and easily throws Barry out. 4-3 on the put out, one gone in the bottom of the first and Ava Duick will be the batter here for Maple Grove. And I said, pretty decent year with the bat. That's an understatement. He's hitting 554, 14 home runs. And they're just gonna put her on. They're not even gonna pitch to her at all. Duick given an intentional walk and that's some kind of respect when you got one out nobody on start the ball game and you just put their hitter on and we will see Dorothy Dweck her sister running at first base as a courtesy runner I mean her numbers are off the charts you know she's playing in a competitive uh, conference to have those kind of numbers and the power numbers she's got very impressive even with those kind of numbers, to me, it's still a l possibly just a little surprising that you walk somebody in this spot. You know, it, it obviously shows the respect they have. Ava did homer against Asia the first time around. It's a dangerous hitter right behind her, too, though, with Jade Tomaszek hitting 492, seven doubles, a triple, three home runs to her credit. It's driven in 15. 
it's a game of pick your own poison, really. Uh, you know, some th theories uh, behind don't let that top person beat you. Make, make everybody else on the team be the ones that drive the runners in instead of that power hitter. Taken for a ball here, so Trice falling behind in the count here. 3-0 to Tomashek. Ellie Hosman on deck. Fairly certain this isn't in the plan to get that far behind in this hitter. Comes with a strike there. And that can be the danger too. And you know, you additional intentional walk, and then all of a sudden the next batter, you're, if you're you know struggling a little bit to throw strikes, starts uh, to look like a little bit of a rally. And that one is outside, and ball four. Tomashek walks, and so runners at first and second with one out now for Hosman. Ellie hitting 460 this year, team high 10 doubles. She's hit three home runs. Boy, that's changed so much over the years. Uh, that, you know, we've been covering softball. It, 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 was, it doesn't feel like that long ago that home runs were relatively rare. Well, that's not the case anymore, that's for sure. When you uh, would remember, like, you'd hear a hitter get into double digits and you, you'd rave about it. Now you're at 14, 15, moving up. Popped this one foul and out of play. Although I, I would say it's a more enjoyable game to watch when it isn't quite so pitching dominated as it seemed to be for a while. I would agree. Pitch is low and nice block there by Lee. I liked when they added the three feet. And it, you know, especially at a high school game, it came, uh, made the whole team become valuable. It, it couldn't really hide a player somewhere. I thought that was great. This one driven out to left field, and it's going to be overhead. One run will score for sure, and they're going to put the stop sign on runner number two. Dorothy Duick is in as Hosman bangs a double to left field, and it's 1-0 Crimson. Wind might be a little tricky, but this one was going to be over her head anyway there as Poppy, I think, got... Maybe just maybe a half step, you know, coming wrong to start it out. But yeah. even mm -hmm. either way, she was not going to be able to get to that one. A dangerous first step got her. So second and third one out, a one nothing lead for the Crimson. And here's Sophie Culhane stepping in. Looks at a strike. Culhane, 315 average this year. She has some pop, four home runs, 20 runs batted in. Three doubles as well. She's had a, a good career in this program. The rare uh, left-hand catcher and then bats right, though. Big hitter here for Trice, I think. Uh, you know, if she could get out of the inning at one nothing, they'd feel okay. Drives it to right field, but drifting foul. On the flip side of that, if Colhane, you know, gets a base hit here uh, to deep to the outfield, probably brings in two, and this inning would all of a sudden look uh, a lot different. Yeah, if you can keep it to one, you're still kind of okay because you're going to have score runs to win anyway. One-two pitch, Colhane fouling this one away. I think Tracy might have gone with a change of pace there. Line to third, and runner able to get back in. Pretty alert base running there by Tomashek as Bree Jones had that one lined right at her chest high, but just couldn't reach the runner in time to double her up. If Tomashek's a little bit less attentive there, that one could have been a double play. Could have been. Call it the hot corner for a reason, right? Sydney Hockett is the batter now for Maple Grove as they'll leave it up to her to try and bring in those two more runners in scoring position. Yeah, you're right. I, that, not much reaction time at third. Now, that ball wasn't hit so hard that it was scary. It was just, uh, <laughs> you know, one right at you. But still, it's getting there in a hurry. There's a strike. Hockett at 400 for the season. 11 runs batted in. 
four extra base hits, three doubles and a triple to her credit, but right now they'd settle for any kind of a base hit. Lifted foul and out of play down the right field side. Now this is their number six hitter at 400. Trice trying to work her way out of trouble with just the one run scoring. Outside with that one, Lee pouncing up out of her crouch. Two balls and two strikes. High chopper could be trouble, but Trice grabs it and throws the first for the out. There's where it helps to have a pretty tall pitcher as Trice able to grab that one. So Maple Grove does get a run, but it looked like it might be a bigger inning than that for a moment. One run on one base hit couple runners left in scoring position. After an inning, it's Maple Grove one and Osseo nothing. CCX Media, your source for great local programming is now available on Apple TV. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to our large on-demand library, including daily newscasts and full sporting events. To find us, go to the App Store and search CCX and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all your favorite local content. The CCX Media app, now available on Apple TV, coming soon to Roku. A Viduak stake to a one-run lead after Maple Grove gets one in the bottom of the first, so we head to the top of two here. Osseo will have the four, five, six hitters up. Trice, Carmen, and Jones. They did get a base runner on a leadoff single in the first, but then Caitlin Schulte was caught stealing. So Trice leading off this second inning. And like Duek, a dangerous hitter. There's a liner, and Barry makes the catch. Four out number one. Barry had that one handcuffed just a little bit. It looked like on the heel of the glove, but still able to hang on and make the grab. It had a lot of backspin to it, and you see kind of almost juggled it, but not enough for it to hit the ground. So one gone, Hannah Carmen will bat. Looks at that one off the plate for ball one. Slicing that one back, foul. Duex seems to be having some success in early going, keeping the ball on the outer corner of the plate from the right-handed hitters. Comes with the change up there on the inner half and gets a called strike, one and two. And slice foul and out of play. First former Maple Grove pitcher Sidney Smith, part of the excellent Gopher softball team that'll be hosting Super Regional Tournament this weekend. And by coincidence, facing the college she started at LSU. <laughs> Always a good storyline for the announcers. Carmen a rip and a miss. Third strikeout for Eva Duek. Two gone here in the second, and Bree Jones will be the batter for Osseo. You think there'll be a scouting report there? Rip and a miss, and you can see that Carmen wasn't looking for that pitch in that spot. She was pretty off balance on that swing. Jones takes ball one. That's a strike, one and one. I think Jones up there looking and, and in this spot, a good thing, you know, you, you don't want to have the feeling that the pitcher just mowed through you in an inning two. You want to kind of, you know, make make it feel like she's 
being made to work a little bit and you know look at a few pitches kind of helps your teammates maybe long term a little bit too not just for your at bat. You want to you want to see if you can wear her down a little bit uh, maybe not physically but maybe a little bit of um, emotional uh, mental part of the game. Let her know let her know that you're here to hit. Check swing there fouled by Jones. Like you see, sometimes you see her really good at bat, and then the recipient is the on deck hitter. Jones laying off that one, and it's out of the zone. Two and two now to the Orioles' third baseman and number six hitter, batting with two outs. Nobody on here in the top of the second. Popping this one up, it'll get back out of play. Jones having a good at bat. For all those who have the game changer, she'd get a quality at bat after the, after the pitch. Change up, dribbler to third. Doyle's gonna have to hurry and will throw across in time as Jones is out 5-3. The Orioles are done in the second. No runs, no hits, and no one left. We go to the bottom of two. It's 1-0 Crimson. What to expect when you're expecting. Like here? A teenager. Today, I'm going to show you how to team-proof your home. First step, hide the car keys. Preferably somewhere they would never look. Challenges will come up. Be ready for them. Hi, honey. Ready for the- Mom, you don't use mannequins in the mannequin challenge. You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. <laughs> And we head to the bottom half of the second. Leafy is on hand, the Crimson mascot here. It might feel good to have a little extra uh, padding on a cool day here. Gosh, Jack, we were marking, I should know by now, but you're thinking it's, we're heading into Memorial Weekend. You shouldn't be cold at a softball or baseball game, but uh, here we are. What was the temperature <laughs> last year on Memorial Weekend? Yeah, I saw, I'd really completely forgotten this uh, on one of the weather reports over the uh, TV news on Wednesday night they said uh, one day was and they believe it was Saturday was 91 then 94 then 100. <laughs> I don't know that we're going to quite get there this year. <laughs> Bella Daniels stepping in here for Maple Grove and takes that one outside and low for ball one. They definitely not going to be in the 90s this weekend. There's a strike. I readily admit I'm not a hot weather fan, but this, we could stand to bump it up a little bit from where we're at here today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And taking low. Well, you, you commented earlier about kind of the depth of this Maple Grove lineup, and that forces Trice or any pitcher they face I think to, to work a little harder, I mean, you can't just pour strikes in the air against the 7, 8, 9 hitters and expect you're gonna, just gonna get them out. Yeah, there's no breathing space, so to speak. You get done with one and you've got another. And, and I think maybe the second time around and you get people on base, that and it starts even builds up a little more because the pitcher now is aware of all the hitters that she's facing. 2-2 pitch was up high. Daniels was locked and loaded and nearly took a swing at that one, but held up. So full count now to Daniels leading off the bottom of the second here for the Crimson. And lining this one out to right, and it's going to get past. Daniels will get at least two out of this, and she'll hang on there. That was a tough one. Sinking liner and Riley Kotke coming in, made an attempt to try and catch it, but couldn't get it. So it'll be a double for Daniels. Maybe in, in hindsight, Kotke might have played that one a little more cautiously and been able to hold her to a single, but just couldn't quite get there. What it might what probably happened there, it was kind of pulling away from her, and so she couldn't get in front of it and block it, and maybe that was her only play. Yep. And the wind, I think, definitely had some impact, too, in knocking that one down. Mavis Sack squaring the bunt, but fouls it. 
So Sachs, the number eight hitter in the lineup here for the Crimson, hitting at 250 this year. It has one sacrifice bunt, hasn't had a ton of at bats for their team. Well, she's had a fair amount, 48 at bats. Trying to bunt here, and this one is foul as it hits her leg while she's still in the box. Played umpire uh, Kevin Purington called it a foul ball. Double bounce there. So see if Sachs might still be called on to try and bunt, or, or if not here after fouling a couple away. And instead takes a called third strike, so one gone. Nice pitch from Price there. Just nipping the outside corner and gets a big out and Maddie Doyle will hit. Really good pitch. Right, right on the corner, I think. Kind of painted that. Got maybe a couple inch break, but. Well, that's the type of pitch that in that with that count in that situation, even if it wasn't a called strike, it was still the right position to put that ball in, I think. Sure. Doyle takes a strike. Doyle, a 290 hitter this year, has one home run, three doubles. Ooh, and that one hit her. Doyle awarded first base on the hit by pitch, so runners at first and second now. Is this one coming up and in? Took it off the forearm or maybe up near the bicep there, and they're gonna have a little huddle here. I thought at first they were checking for injury, but that's not what this is. It's a conference a here. Strategy meeting. Yep. And so obviously with a first and second, you got some possibilities what you might want to do. You got your leadoff hitter up. There's a look at Eric Ruska, the Osseo head coach. And uh, these coaches took over these programs only a year apart from each other. And both have been uh, around their schools for a long time and to coach other sports as well, too. I think Eric's been there 15 or 16 years. 17 years. 17 yeah. years. Barry grounded out to second her first time up. Little slicer just foul down the right field line. And there's Jim Coltis, the Crimson head coach, 18th year. Also the girls hockey coach for the Champlain Park Coon Rapids program and was formerly the head coach at Maple Grove. That one fouled away as Barry didn't mean to swing at that one, a little check swing. So 0-2. Keep in mind they've got Duek on deck here who Osseo chose not to pitch to last time. So that's kind of in the back of everyone's mind here in terms of what strategies ahead. Another little liner fouled on the first base side. You probably don't want to do a lot with your runners right now, so you can get Duek up this inning with a runner in scoring position. Outside with that one, one and two. Price trying to get her to chase one and expand the zone a little bit there. Back to Trice, she's gonna go to third with it. They'll throw across, but the only play is the lead runner. And so, nice job there to, to get that lead runner. I think a lot of times, you know, younger pitchers are kind of hesitant to make that play that they're always thinking of, I'm just gonna go to first and take the safe out, but certainly can help you when you can get that lead off, or lead runner there. And they're gonna put Duek on again here to load him up. So second straight intentional walk given to Duek. And I know some people, you know, maybe kind of grumble about that or whatever, but it's part of the game. It's a playoff game. You don't know what to give it a letter hit. <laughs> I mean, you got you got to hand it to uh, uh, Eric for staying, you know, sticking to his guns because that's not an easy call to put, you know, another runner up in the scoring position with a dangerous uh, hitter. Keep her away. And again, Dorothy Duke is the courtesy runner for her sister at first. Tomashek, who walked last time up, hits now with the bases full. And 
and takes that one for a ball. Yeah. Another key spot for Trice to try and work out of here. The game's still one nothing. They're right there, but the base is full here. Tomashek, a hard liner, and that one will get into right field. There may be a play at first. Nope, they'll throw into second of the cutoff, and a run scores as Doyle comes in. It's two to nothing, Crimson. This ball was just hit so hard. It wasn't that far away, really, necessarily from you know the first baseman here. But Potratz, I mean, there's just no reaction time to be able to get to that ball when it's hit this hard. I thought there really was a chance to throw her out here at first, but never really looked that way. I mean, I, I'm not saying they would have, but it could have been close anyway. Because it was hit so hard, there might have been a chance that right fielder could have got the out. So Hosman, who doubled in the first run of the game, now hitting with the bases full two outs and a 2 nothing lead. And just low with that one. Hosman fouls this one away at the plate. Now here's something Hosman just did that a lot of people aren't going to really recognize. That pitch was inside and she cleared her hip out immediately uh, thinking that she already recognized that pitch to pull that ball, which was a nice piece of hitting for her. Fouls this one straight back. The last time at bat, you know, she took that pitch and went to left center um, on an outside pitch. So. Good for her. That's a, a nice, uh, sophisticated hitting technique. Laid off that one just high. I think Price wanted that one. Two and two now to Hosman. And drills it foul. Another thing that kind of adds to it for Maple Grove here with two outs, the runners can really just be aggressive and taking off right away too. And you might even, might even score that runner from first on an extra base. Yep. Soft liner and a nice grab there by Schulte coming in to make the catch. So Maple Grove again gets a run, although it looked like they had a chance for more. One run in the inning on one base hit. No errors, and they leave three more. They've stranded five through two innings. It's 2 nothing, Crimson. Sometimes the things we do or say can make others feel hurt, excluded, or isolated. Everything you say and do creates an impact. How am I supposed to save the whole world? You can't think about saving the world. You have to think about saving one person. Because of you, someone's entire life can change. You don't have to be a superhero to have a positive impact. Friends? Friends. Welcome back here to Maple Grove. Quicker, I made their uh, Crimson did up two hits that last inning, so a total of three is correct as we had the leadoff double by Daniels and then later the sharp single pass first by Tomashek. So we had the inning number three, the bottom third of the order coming for Osio here, Erica Schulte, Kendall Potratz, and Lauren Hans will bat as they try and get something going against Eva Dueck. First pitch taken for a ball here by Erica Schulte as she leads off this third inning. Orioles had a leadoff hit to start the ball game, but then really haven't done a lot since. Uh, Duick struck out three of the next five hitters. To short, Barry over to grab it. And throws across in time for the out here to start the third. And Potratz will be the batter here for Osio. 
They had a lot of rain. They had to do a lot of work on this field, so it really softens it up, which, you know, in a way is good for an infielder, but you kind of have to be conscious that the ball's not going to get to you real quick and probably play a little, possibly a step in from what you might normally do. Your other option might be, uh, you know, make a note, self little note to yourself. I'm going to have to play a little more aggressively on those kind of pit balls, and probably both coaches may have reminded them about it already. Rip and a miss here. Duick ahead in the count, 0-2. Ball outside with that one as she hit Colhane's target, but Sophie was set up off the plate. Kind of a standard thing, trying to get that hitter to expand the zone a little bit. And a cut and a miss. Strikeout number four for Duick. And Lauren Hans will be the hitter. And she paints that outside corner again, as we had really good control over there. And Duarte really, I think, throws just hard enough that you kind of have some trouble catching up to it, and that sort of sets up her other pitches. You like to have that uh, fastball kind of set up your pitches so that uh, you, you get that hitter kind of a little bit of a target moving forward a little bit. You want them to kind of maybe a little bit of a jerk before that pitch and then off speed with your other pitches. Rip and a miss at that one. Two balls and a strike. And now two and two. That was exactly what we were talking about there. Took a little something off of that one. Nice job protecting the plate there as Hans fights that one off, fouls it out of play. Third strike, back-to-back -back K's to end the inning there for Duick, and Osseo out quickly in the third. No runs, no hits, no one left. We head to the bottom half of inning number three with Maple Grove leading it 2-0. Our hearts are made stronger by how we treat others. Put her there. The light you share can impact those around you, but so can the darkness. Later, twerps! Did Pete saying mean things bother you? So when you reach out to another person, <laughs> take a moment to consider how they will feel and let your heart be the key to making a difference. Because of you, someone's entire day, year, or even life can change. In every heart, there's hope. Welcome back here to Maple Grove High School along with Jack Tebow, MJ Wilcox. Section 5 for a softball on CCX Sports, a winner's bracket game. Second round, Maple Grove leading Osseo by a score of two to nothing here after each team won their first round game. It will be Sophie Colhane, Sydney Hockett, and Bella Daniels hitting for Maple Grove here in the bottom of the third. Crimson, of, they have scored a run in each of the first two innings, but they've been kind of teetering on really breaking things open. They stranded a couple in the first and and then left the bases full in the second. Now, see how the rest of the game goes, whether they eventually kind of break the dam open or if uh, Trice is going to be able to just keep them where they are and uh, wiggle out of some jams here. Stats would say that the advantage will go to the hitter more they see the pitcher as the game progresses, plus because the fatigue factor starts kind of entering the contest. Colhane lined out last time, drives this one deep to left field, and it is gone. Home run number four this season for Sophie Colhane. And make that number five. Looks like she got one pretty much down the middle. 
The Coleman got a very nice swing on it. Yeah, a little bit up inside, but and she knew it was gone. Good full swing. Wind blowing in pretty strong from right center, but didn't seem to really have much impact on that one as she lifts it up and out. And so Hockett will hit. Sydney bounced one back to Trice her first time up that kind of high chopper that Trice was able to glove and and really that was a pretty big play at the time because if that one bounces over her head there's they're not going to get an out and a run would have scored and the inning would have continued but Trice made a nice fielding play to help take a hit away from Hockett on that occasion it's one and one now to Hockett she showed really a good defensive move it was and it was a big play. Here's a liner fair. Oh, a nice play to cut that ball off. Really hit. As Kotke got over there in a hurry, and that ball was spinning away, and that could have been trouble if it had gotten farther away. As it is, it's a single for Hockett. This is one of those plays where it's a great play by the outfielder, even though it doesn't end up being, a, you know, resulting in an out. Because if that ball rolls by her, that's probably a triple. Lonely position out there with no backup. That's right. There would be a long run to go get that one. Squared as if to bunt there, Daniels strike one. She had to double her first time up. Let's go, Bella! With nobody out, you start over with your uh, strategy. Bunting this one, but chopping it foul. Coach might have the uh, Maple Grove hitters over for bunting practice. Uh, yeah, I always, I always kind of have in the back of your mind, and I know this isn't really the case, but for, for a hitter, thinking like, well, I really wanted to hit away anyway, so if I follow one away, then it means I get to swing like this. <laughs> Throw to first base, though, is going to be in time yeah. to record the out. So Daniels is out 9-3. Hockett advances to second on the play, so one gone. This was as she was a victim of hitting the ball too hard here, just a one hopper. It's actually a pretty easy play. They get an out, that's like easier than throwing from across the infield, really, from there. Kaki made a nice play, made, made it look really, you know, like you said, very easy. Very, she was right in rhythm with it. Hop on the grass, slid a little bit. Going to have a pinch hitter here from Maple Grove as Jenna Grunig will step up and hit for sacks. Grunig takes a strike. Jenna's hitting 316. Six hits and 19 at bats, a couple of doubles. Rip and a miss at that one. Flaps it foul past first base. Let's go, Chandler! Green's showing kind of an inside out swing. Fouls another one out of play. And a cut and a miss, and Trice gets Grunig on strikes for out number two. Maddie Doyle will be the hitter now for Maple Grove. Got her to chase this one up and in. Off ball right above her hands there. And Doyle out in front of that change up for a swing and a miss. See Maddie was hit by a pitch last time around and came in to score. We talk about <clears throat> watching the ball and it looked like Doyle maybe lost track of it about 15 feet in front of her on that outside pitch. 
to third. Jones up with it, throws across in time, and so Maple Grove gets a single run once again, this time on a leadoff homer by Culhane. One run, two hits, and one left aboard. We've played three full here in the Section 5 4 8 tournament. It is three to nothing, Crimson. <laughs> Even the flies are going slow. Sometimes the things we do or say can make others feel hurt, excluded, or isolated. Everything you say and do creates an impact. How am I supposed to save the whole world? You can't think about saving the world. You have to think about saving one person. Because of you, someone's entire life can change. You don't have to be a superhero to have a positive impact. Friends? Friends. Top of four, top seed Maple Grove leading number five seed Osseo three nothing here in this second round game in section five, four A softball. Schulte, Poppy, and Lee, the one, two, three hitters will come up in inning number four for Osseo. And that means that uh, Duek has faced a minimum nine hitters through three innings. Schulte, who is up now, did lead off the first inning with a single, but then was caught stealing. And then Duek has retired everyone else since. And then this one dribbled foul. We will be back Friday, incidentally, for next round softball, weather permitting, uh, on CCX Sports here. The winner of this game will be facing Champlain Park in the winner's bracket. Again, that's weather permitting. We have to see that almost every game this year, and then even more so in this case, that does sound like Overnight Thursday and into Friday, we are going to see perhaps a fair amount of rain again. Yeah, it may not be raining in the afternoon, but you, you just kind of wonder how much more the fields can take. It, it has been a deluge this spring. Two-one pitch here to Schulte, and behind that one, and it's two and two. You know, aside really from Schulte's hit too, Jacket, Osio hasn't really squared up much of anything against, you know, Duick. I mean, obviously they want to be confident coming up there, but they haven't really been able to see it happening for them. There's a called third strike, third K in a row here, dating back to last inning for Ava. And Grace Poppy will be the batter now for Osio. They haven't got the barrel on it. Change up delivery. Poppy was a strikeout victim her first time through. Think about Duet, she's been very efficient with her pitches uh, today. Not, not, not a lot of deep counts. Rip and a miss. Yeah, and when you have confidence in your stuff, you can kind of go after hitters too. I mean, you don't really have to be thinking about nibbling. And obviously, every situation's a little different depending if there's people on base and whatnot. But just in general, she's been aggressive. And that kind of indicates to me that she and her catcher and her coach are confident in her ability to just go after them and get them. Now, again, that doesn't mean you want to throw fat pitches right over the heart of the plate or anything. a called third strike and Poppy caught looking for out number two as Duek continues to mow him down. Serena Lee will be the hitter. How many called third strikes is that? Well, three in a row. So, and that's three total. Another look at that one. So seven strikeouts in the game now. And I think you, when you establish that you're able to put the ball where you want to, you might get a little bit you know, uh, out uh, an inch or two as well when you're hitting the mitt perfectly. I always say when you're in a game, you're, you're kind of training your umpire to what you throw. You, know, you might not get it early in the game, but if you stay there 
Umpire kind of comes around a little bit more. He goes, oh, maybe I'm missing that pitch. Taken for a ball there by Lee. She too was a strikeout victim her first time up. Now, if you look at our umpire, they, they line up what they call in the slot. So when they get that outside pitch, it's an angle across the plate, which is always a little bit harder to call than the one inside on them. And so sometimes you get that breaking pitch can be maybe even a couple of inches out and still get the call. Change up, dribble down to second. Tomashek will flip to first for the out. And so not a strikeout, but another one, two, three inning for Duak. No runs, no hits, and no one left for Asio in the fourth. We head to the bottom half of inning number four. It's three nothing, Maple Grove. Did you hear about the pony with a sore throat? He was a little horse. <laughs> Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. <laughs> Why couldn't the pellet wait? Why was the basketball court all wet? Why? Because the players kept dribbling all over it. Where did cats go on vacation? New York. <laughs> Little scouting going on there. Some of the Champlain Parks players just filed in and uh, keeping an eye on this one as they will be facing the winner of this game. And again, they got their game in on Wednesday. As you get a look at some of their action against Irondale, Champlain Park jumped out early, got two runs in the first two innings, single runs in each of the first two. And we're kind of keeping it uh, at that two nothing lead. But then in the top of the seventh, Irondale, a two run base hit to tie it up at two to two. But Champlain Park answering, getting the winning run there in the bottom half of the seventh to pull out a three to two victory. And so they again will face the winner of this game in the winner's bracket final, we call it in the uh, double elimination tournament. So that was a good park, uh, park win, right? I mean, a good Champlain Park win. Irondale's got a good club and section play, one run games. Barry will hit here for Maple Grove to lead off the fourth. Now with Champlain Park played Maple Grove in the regular season. It was a tight battle, one nothing win for Maple Grove. Tomashek hit a home run for the only run of the game. And this one fouled out of play here by Barry, who is 0 for 2 this afternoon. Did reach on a fielder's choice last time around. And liner goes well foul. We've seen quite a few balls hit down that right field line in this game. I think uh, you find Trice throwing a lot of pitches, <coughs> excuse me, to the outside corner. And the, to the credit of the Maple Grove hitters, they're covering the plate, taking the pitch with, you know, with the location. Hard line drive to center. And that'll be a base hit for Barry as she really got a lot of that one and drives it into the outfield. So Duek will be the batter, but whether she will actually be allowed to bat, we'll see here as you can look at Barry stroking that one. They're going to put Ava Duek on again. As her third straight intentional pass will bring Tomashek up. And we will see Dorothy Duek run for Ava Duek again at first base here for Maple Grove. What do you think? You're a really good hitter and you don't get a chance to swing. How do you feel about that? I mean, it is a sign of respect in a way, but yeah, it's got to be frustrating. There's no doubt about that. Tomashek's at a walk and then an RBI single. Popped out of Lee's glove. I actually talked. Uh, the story I did a couple weeks back for our Sports Champ show on Holly Blaska from Champlain Park, who's mm -hmm. similar and just a lights out hitter and facing that quite a bit too, where teams are just putting her on. And, you know, they, they talked about uh, you, our goal then is every time they do that, we want you scoring. We want our next yeah. series to come through. And obviously that's easier said than done, but, you know, you, you kind of want to make teams pay for that or at least think twice if they're going to do it. I think it's a good message from the coach to send it to the rest of the squad. Let's uh, let's say, let's not let them take our best hitter out. And when they do that, let's make them pay for it, right? 
Taking up high for a ball. And again, you know, kind of addressing, you hear a grumble here there, whether it be baseball or softball, when you see intentional walks. And uh, I don't think anybody loves it, but I do think it is part of the game. And, and it's not unsportsmanlike to do it or anything like that, especially at playoff time. Yeah, I don't believe it's unsportsmanlike at all. Um, and I don't think they would have had, you know, the intentional walk rule inserted, uh, you know, if they wouldn't have thought it was a sports unsportsmanlike. Yeah, and, and it, it just kind of speeds things up, too, instead of, you know, obviously, if Osio didn't want to pitch to her, they would have just thrown four pitches a little bit outside if, if, if that rule hadn't been put in. There is an art to that as well. Pitchers work so hard. Thomas Shack lifting one foul and out of play. They work so hard during the winter throwing strikes. Now, now they keep that away from that hitter. Don't throw anything near her. Another 3-2 pitch coming up here. First and second, nobody out for Maple Grove in the fourth. Thomas Shack lifting it out to right field. That wind will really knock it down though. And Kotke has a relatively easy play on that one. First out recorded, Ellie Hossman will be the batter. She produced a big hit in the first inning with a RBI double. It's a good lesson too for younger players that maybe at first when you're little, you think, you know, well, oh, they stuck me in right field. That's not an important position. Tell me that after watching this game. Kotke's really been active out there and made some good plays. And had one that she attempted to make a, a shoestring grab on that bounce past her. But, uh, you know, she's certainly been as involved as virtually anyone other than the pitcher or catcher in this game. I, I think with more right-handed hitters and, uh, you know, if you have a pitcher that's all dominant at all, it, they'll hit, take it to right field. Hosman bouncing to first. Potrats will make the play there and no real opportunity to get anybody else. So the other runners will move up. So second and third and two out. So look at what Colhane did when she came up last inning and sending this one deep over the fence in left field. Only home run we've had of the game. We've had some extra base shots, but, and maybe Osio is thinking again about we might be gonna issue a free pass here. They may not pitch to Colhane here. The base, uh, first base is open. You do set up that force out situation. Uh, so it's not the worst idea in the world. Um, and he certainly knows his pitcher. And he's, you know, he's, uh, he's seen Hosman now uh, at least twice this season and several at bats and knows what he can do with her. And maybe he's confident that, uh, you know, he thinks the next hitter is gonna do it. But I think against Maple Grove, I think it's a tough call. Yep, they're gonna put Colhane on to load the bases here. So duex has been walked intentionally three times. This is the fourth intentional walk given to Sophie Colhane and Sydney Hockett will hit with the bases loaded and two outs. And again, Maple Grove leading at three to nothing, although in a lot of ways it feels like it could be more. And just one of these times, are they gonna break through and really get that clutch hit with the bases full or two on, as we've seen in a couple of the previous innings. Hockett singled her last time up and it gets away and a run will score. As Lee had that one sneak through her there, pass ball will allow that run to come in. And all the base runners move up on this play. It's pretty high and inside, but I think one you'd probably say the catcher you should have. And so a four nothing game and Hockett now hitting with runners at second and third. And again, there are two outs already, but it still does kind of take away that option of a force play at the other bases if that's gonna be a shorter or easier play. Lifted foul and out of play here by Hockett. Yeah, it's really the last thing you want is uh, load your bases and then have a uh, you know, pitch that doesn't get handled, scores a run. Up the middle, Schulte gets to it and fires the first for the out. And again, Osteo is able to escape some trouble, but Maple Grove does push across one run in the inning on one base hit. And a couple left the board. We have completed four full now, and it is Maple Grove leading Osseo 4-zip here on CCX. 
CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is now available on Apple TV. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You will also have access to our large on-demand library, including daily newscasts and full sporting events. To find us, go to the App Store and search CCX and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all your favorite local content. The CCX Media app, now available on Apple TV, coming soon to Roku. And welcome back here to Maple Grove. Ava Duek's been pretty dominant so far here for Maple Grove, leading it by a score of four to nothing. The very first hitter she faced got a base hit, but that's been it since then. As you get a look at some of her day today, piling up the strikeouts. Jay, what do you think about Minnesota softball in general right now? Is this the time to be a big fan of softball? Uh, that's for sure. Talking college level, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a lot of good things going on there too. Gophers, Augustana is in the championship of Division II, St. Thomas in the championship of Division Three, even Valley City and NAIA in the championship. So, and they all have Minnesota players on their rosters. So, kind of starting to happen for Minnesota players, I think. Trice a swing and a miss. And a young lady that we were covering last spring at this time, Natalie Den Hartog from Hopkins. What a year she's had for the Gophers. Wow. I, I, I had full confidence that uh, Nat would be a good player at the college level, but I don't know that I would have expected the explosion it's, she's had. It is an explosion, isn't it? She's been amazing. Price lined out to the shortstop her first time up. And we saw her play last year, and to think that she would rip apart the Big Ten like she has. Congratulations to her and the Gophers. Tap foul here by Trice. Now I think you're starting to get to the later innings where Osseo probably feeling a little more pressure. You know, it's like if we don't start getting base runners now, we're going to run out of time here. They're already down 4 nothing, but it's been a tough go against uh, Eva Duek. Trice popping it up. Colhain reaching and oh, almost. Made the catch. She got a pretty good read on that ball. It is, uh, you know, really not hit all that high and right over her head. I thought she did a pretty good job of spotting this one, but just couldn't quite get there. White, what might be a little bit of an issue is that she was down on a knee. She dropped her one knee and took a little bit longer to maybe to get up. Tap to the second baseman and nice play by Tomashek, but also a nice play there to, to realize that, okay, I'm not getting this ball. I got to get over there and cover. And Hosman, they, they kind of made that play look easy where I, a ball hitting in exactly that spot, I've seen many times teams have trouble with it. Absolutely. Just because of indecision as much as anything. Hannah Carmen will be the hitter. That one skipped in, one of the few pitches that's really gotten away from Duick today. I always wonder how pitchers you know, sustain their efforts in this type of weather. You know, do they get everything cool off a little bit more? You're still in the game. Does that affect you in the long run? Taken low for a ball there by Carmen, who was a strikeout victim her first time up. There's a strike and I really feel like I mean obviously again everybody's different and you do what works best for you but I feel like on a cold day like this the fact that Ava works pretty quick is to her benefit not being out there dawdling and and for fielders too and there's a hard hit ball by Carmen second base hit of the game for Osseo a no doubter there for Carmen as she strokes that one up the middle so a runner with one out here for the Orioles and Bree Jones will hit. And you know, talked about not squaring up many <laughs> balls. That one she did. Yes, she did. And we were talking about you know, working quick, but that's true. It keeps your players in the game, and also I'm sure they appreciate getting off the field where they can maybe throw a coat on or you know, get out of the wind a little bit. Jones bounced to third her first time up. Takes that one high and away for a ball. And now 2-0. Oh. 
Osio really wanted to at least put a little bit of doubt into Duarte's mind, you know, to put a little bit of pressure, put it, put a little bit of a rally together, and see if they can build on that. And now three and out. Swinging on three and zero and fouls that one back. Jones liked that pitch. It's harder. Hitters uh, sometimes don't quite know for sure what their pitch is uh, as they as they become a little older. It helps. And there's ball four. So a single and then a walk now is the first time in the game that Osio's had two base runners aboard at the same time. They just uh, had a one previous runner on at all. That came in the first. So here's Erica Schulte hitting as the Orioles try and battle back into this one. And we're going to see a little conference defensively here for Maple Grove. I think this is a good timeout. Game, the game is still in hand. Everybody feels still pretty comfortable. Uh, however, you know, you've uh, given up a hard hit and walked the next uh, hitter. And so I think this is a good timeout for Coltis to come out and uh, kind of calm everybody down and give uh, Ava Duick a, a breather. Let her regroup a little bit. So, see how that works for her. Schulte bounced to the shortstop her first time up. Key opportunity here for Osio as they get a couple of runners aboard with one out. And slice foul and into the backstop. And Dewey comes back with a strike. Settle down a little bit. Coach reminding her, you got a four run lead. Let the, you can pitch to contact. You, you got good defense behind you. To third, Doyle is going to make the tag on the lead runner, and that's all they'll get. So two outs. Erica Schulte aboard on the fielder's choice. Doyle not going to take any chances there. She's looking, you know, I, I suppose I could have run to the bag, but it was a lot closer to just take that runner. And they weren't really going to realistically have much of a chance to do anything beyond that one out anyway. So Potrats will be the hitter now with two outs and two on. Late cut on that one, and it's 0 and 1. I think Doyle was laughing to herself a little bit, going, Really? I, did I just go try to take it? <laughs> I think after she did, she's second thoughts. But yeah. got the, got the, uh, the effect hat worked right. Yeah, as I was saying, you know, I don't think the outcome of the play would have been any different if she had just run right to the bag either. So right, that's right. Little liner foul down the right field line again. So Dueck looking to work out of a little mini jam here. Really the first real threat Osio has had. Line foul again. So Pirates, a uh, victim of a strikeout, her last at bat, having a little bit better quality at bat right now. Choked up a little bit. And you talked about it earlier. The more you see a pitcher even within a game, usually you're going to probably be a little more comfortable in there. Doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get a hit, but. That's right. And a rip and a miss. And Dua comes back to strike her out. And so Osio's done in the fifth. No runs, one hit. No crimson errors and a couple left the board. We go to the bottom half of the fifth inning with Maple Grove still leading at four nothing.
Welcome back here to Maple Grove. And that fan there in the yellow jacket smarter than me remembering the blanket today like you should <laughs> always have at these spring games. As Maple Grove leading Osseo by a 4 nothing count here. We go to the bottom of the fifth. The 7-8-9 hitters coming up for Maple Grove as they try and build on a 4 nothing lead. Daniels a double and then last time you kind of feel unfortunate for her she hit the ball well enough that it could have been a base hit but it was a one hopper right at the right fielder and so she was thrown out at first base so one for two. As a coach I always think that it's really frustrating and for the hitter as well you know I've, I've cleared the infield here we go you're already counting that single. Good play by now. Yeah, Phil who makes play. In. But here's the thing. If you're a pitcher, you'll say yes, but that's balanced <laughs> out by when you hit a five foot dribbler on the third baseline and then beat it out and that's called a hit. That's right. Looks like a screaming line drive in, in the box score. Well, and, and another thing that can be frustrating that you'll see in fast pitch fairly often too, you know, kind of along those same lines is maybe you got somebody on first and you line a hard liner to center and they get the force play at second. Well, it technically is not a base hit anymore. That's right. Because uh, there's <laughs> a true. force play. Daniels taking a mighty cut at that one but didn't get it. And lining it foul past first base. Fights that one off. And up high with that one is Trice, so the count will run full here to Daniels leading off the fifth for Maple Grove. They have had base runners galore in this one. They've scored single runs in each of the first four innings. Although they've left a lot of runners on base as well. They left two in the first, three more in the second, one in the third, and two more in the fourth. So in a lot of ways, they're probably thinking, gosh, we could have broken this one open by now. But then again, it's a playoff game against a pretty quality opponent. You, you don't really you don't know, feel bad about only scoring four so far either. Daniels will draw a walk. And Mavis Sachs will hit. Should be having a comfort zone with a four run lead at this point. Um, so you're right though, it, it could easily be much more. Sack squaring, try to get it down, but bunts it foul. Last time up, uh, Jenna Grunick batted four sacks in this spot, and actually the result though was the same. They, she struck out as Sacks did her first time up. Sacks again squaring early. Gets this one down right in front of the plate. Jones throwing the first for the out, then they'll throw back to second. Oh, and just didn't quite get the tag on as Daniels had to dive back in. Base umpire Pat Rock had a really good look at that, and it was really close. Yeah, she didn't quite reach her with the tag here. Could see it from back here. The ball beats her there, but I don't think she ever tagged her. Got the hand just underneath it. Yeah. So Maddie Doyle will hit runner at second one out. Nice job by Sachs to get that bunt down. I was just thinking before that pitch that sometimes I think hitters, you know, we've seen it from Maple Grove today, but just in general, just try to be too perfect with that bunt. You just really need to get that ball down, and that's what she did there. 
good play by Osio too. We had a great vantage point, or my side of the table even more so than yours, Jack, to see that Jones really had to make sure she didn't hit that runner with that throw and got it over there in time, made a nice play. And Schulte uh, actually made a nice reaction to throw back behind that runner. That was a very heads up play by her. Sometimes you'll see that second baseman come in and they'll keep waiting for the shortstop to get there. She reacted fairly quickly and made a nice throw. Yeah, and that's a lot of repetition. You practice that and, you know, most teams will do that. And I always, you know, you feel like the teams that are really serious about those kind of attention to details are the ones that have success that, you know, you don't just kind of go through the motions. There's a hard liner by Doyle for a base hit and that'll score a run. Coming in to score is Daniels as Doyle delivers a base hit and gets an RBI out of it. Hit that ball solidly. And not only hits this ball well, but hits it, you know, so it's not directly at an outfielder. That really eliminated any chance they would have had to cut off that run from scoring. So Barry will hit. Five nothing lead now for Maple Grove. Doyle at first, one out. Barry one for three today. And that hard liner just over Carmen's glove for a base hit. So Barry, a couple of hits and four trips now as Doyle in at second. And let's see if they're gonna put Duhek on again. Yes, they are. Duek. Last time they played Osseo on CCX in the regular season, launching that home run, one of her 14 home runs there. Just plain said, we're not going to give her that chance today. She's been intentionally walked all four times. So bases loaded now for Tomashek. Still just one out. It's 5 nothing. Takes that one for a ball. Boy, good job by Tomashek to take, because you, you know, you're obviously real eager to make them pay and and want to come up here and get a good hit but if you can keep the train rolling here and you know if it even means taking a walk of your own fouling this one off the batting cage down the right field side i was wondering if um, the infield might come in to cut that runoff uh, middles middles are playing relatively deep and not sure could get that force out at home on a ground ball at that depth no, I don't think so at all. Especially at short, she's quite deep. Mm -hmm. Tomashek turning on that one and knocks it foul past the Osseo dugout. I think the feeling for Osseo right now is we're, you know, we're behind by enough that even just trying desperately to cut off that next run isn't maybe the thing to do in this right, spot, plus right. with a dangerous hitter up. One two offering from Trice. And a called third strike. Tomashek caught looking for out number two. And Ellie Hosman will be the batter. Another look at that call strike. It looked like it just wasn't the pitch that she was looking for in that spot. Tomashek. I think it caught her by surprise. Yeah. Osman had an RBI double in the first. And the line out and the ground out. Fouling that one straight back. So almost every inning has played out somewhat the same way where Maple Grove gets a run and Osio wiggles out of trouble. And they get a run, I mean, it's been the same. They've got single runs in each of the first five. We'll see if Trice can get out of trouble again here. Hosman to left center field. That one's going to be down for extra bases. Might score three. Carmen receiving the throw. Dorothy Duex scores, and it's a three-run double for Ellie Hosman as she clears the bases. And there's that clutch hit that Maple Grove has been looking for throughout the afternoon to really stretch it out now at 8 nothing. <laughs> Drove this ball to left center. 
didn't have a, you could you know tell it wasn't gonna have enough to get out or anything but just put it in a great spot between the outfielders on the gap yep Sophie Culhane the batter and lifts this one foul was intentionally walked last time this time they'll pitch to her she went yard in the third inning looks at that one outside high and out of the zone. And this one lifted out to short left. It's going to drop in. Here comes the throw to the plate. It is not in time. Hosman able to slide around the tag and a run scores to make it nine nothing as Culhane will be in at second. Good strong throw here and I really was kind of thinking we might see an out call there. Mm, close. Must have missed that arm because he was right on top of it. See the tag coming and, and it's just hard to tell. I mean, it, he had a really good aim. Yeah, it looks to me like if the tag was made it would have been in time but it, it, it may have very well that she didn't quite get the arm Maybe another look at it see reaching back and it's just so hard to tell if there's space between yeah. the glove and the arm at that point and he's got a good look so that's why Kevin is getting all the big money it's really close right here coming up right yeah. there it is yeah because if if she touched her it would have been in time but may not have gotten her with that sweep tag so Colhane in at second and nine nothing game now and Hockett will be the batter here for Maple Grove I have to admit when I in watching it live I thought the arm was going to come up in an out call there it was very close he anticipate the throw yeah see there you go again it's very so close right there right right coming in and yeah, like, like I was saying, the, 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 no doubt that the tag, if it was made, was in time to record an out, but you can't see there if you actually got her. Schulte bobbles it a little bit and then throws it wide, and here will come the winning run. Hockett's bouncer to second thrown away, and it scores the winning run for the Crimson as Corin Pallant was in as a runner and they will end up 10 running Osseo on that play. As Maple Grove, as we said, have been putting single runs up one after the other and then this fifth inning, it all breaks open. And they get six and just like that put Osseo away. I don't think the base runner at first W saw that the throw had gotten away and there was a little hesitation you're kind of thinking oh are they still gonna have time to score it but the answer proves to be yes and so Maple Grove pulling it away Jack and we kind of you we touched on it earlier is like they may ask you how many innings are they gonna be able to dance out of trouble and is one of these finally gonna break open and that's exactly what we saw here in the fifth they're living dangerously the entire game and and uh, to Maple Grove's credit they continue to put uh, pressure on uh, Osseos through the whole game. So Maple Grove, the top seed, you know, kind of taking care of business like you, they would have hoped to or expect to, but you never know when it comes playoff time and you're playing a rival. And so they uh, they do a solid job to end up winning this one by a 10 to nothing score. And as we said, we'll be back, uh, weather permitting, Friday for winner's bracket final action as Champlain Park Rebels, the number two seed winning their first two games will be coming over to take on Maple Grove if the weather holds out and the field conditions hold out for that one. So, I think that's going to be a really good game. Yeah, it sure was in the regular year and they've, you know, as the top two seeds, they're, they're the teams that have played the best uh, during the regular season. So we hope you've enjoyed this uh, battle here today and it's Maple Grove dominating against Osseo. Our final 10-0 Crimson in five innings for Jack Tebow and all of our CCX crew. I'm Jay Wilcox. So long from Maple Grove.